the cost of a Thanksgiving meal has dropped, but the impact of inflation still lingers in the wallets of Americans and remains higher than pre-pandemic levels. The American Farm Bureau Federation's 39th annual Thanksgiving dinner survey provides a snapshot for a holiday feast and a family of 10. And joining us now to discuss this is economist for the American Farm Bureau Federation, Barrett Nelson. Good morning to you, Barrett. Great to see ya. Good morning. Good to see you as well. The cost this year is roughly $58.08 uh, for, for a family of 10, so about $5.80 per person. This is a decrease from last year, but still 19% higher than it was, like we said, in those pre-pandemic levels, higher than it was then in 2019. How does this highlight the impact inflation has had on really food prices and farmer costs since the pandemic? You know, this is 5% lower than last year. Like you said, about 19% lower than just, or higher than just five years ago. We've had two years of consecutive declines, but this isn't quite enough to erase the dramatic increases that gave us record high costs in 2022. And if you compare the past few years, if I'm not uh, mistaken, Baron, it has gotten a little cheaper, right? Because in, in 2023, uh, the cost was actually more than $61 for a family of 10. And in 2022, it was $64. So what do you make of this sort of downward trend the past few years? You know, I think this market basket survey really reflects, you know, the overall economy. If we think about it, inflation has slowed a little bit and inflation is a measure of growth. It doesn't necessarily mean prices are going down, but in this case, we're seeing some price volatility in the cost of food. And, you know, while we've slowed down a little bit, it's not enough to get us back to these pre-pandemic levels. It's important to remember that, you know, while consumers face this inflation, our farmers and ranchers that grow our food are facing this inflation right. as well. Right, and, that, and our poor farmers are actually, they're the ones who are really losing out big uh, when you think about it. I was looking at that chart of just how much has gone down in the past few years. I wanted to see some kind of individual comparisons when you look at some of the items, like a 16 pound turkey, for instance, because in 2023, it was about uh, $27.35. This year, it's actually dropped uh, to $25. We we're looking at fresh cranberries. I think we have uh, a little chart that shows this, in fact, right here. The, the decline, as you mentioned, does not erase the increase that we've had the past two years. Uh, nonetheless, though, we're seeing cranberries, we're seeing sweet potatoes, we're seeing all these things starting to come down. So can we expect, do you think, Barrett, food prices to continue <clears throat> to drop throughout the year when you look at some of this? You know, we got to think about this in terms of kind of price volatility and price movement. So even though inflation has slowed, it hasn't gone away. And that's kind of leading to some variability in the cost we see at the grocery store. If we look at turkey, for example, turkey's a curious situation this year. It's that centerpiece, it's the most popular item on the list. And if we look at it, the turkeys raised in the United States this year are actually the lowest we've seen since 1985. And usually you'd think this would drive prices up, but demand for turkey has slowed. And so we've seen a pound less per capita on demand for turkey, and this has led to lower prices. Okay, so there's still that supply and demand uh, that we know is always going to be uh, affected there. This is also region specific because in the West, Americans are going to spend about 14% higher than, than really the rest of the country. In the South, it's always cheaper. Let's take a look at some of those comparisons right now. Out West, if we're looking at uh, dinner for, look at this, for a family of 10, $67.81. But then in the South, it goes down to $56.81. So almost a $10 differential there when you look at the West versus the South. I mean, even there, it's more in the Midwest than it is uh, in the Northeast. So explain the differences in food prices across the U.S., Barrent. You know, I think we got to look at this in terms of cost of living. The West has consistently been higher over the years, and this really shows up when we break this down regionally. We see higher labor costs in the West comparatively. And so when you're the next comparison would be when you're landlocked in, you know, the Midwest or the North, North region, you know, where it takes a little bit more money to ship some of those products to where they need to be. So all those transportation and labor costs come into play as well as the overall cost of living. All right. Well, economist for the American Farm Bureau Federation, Barrett Nelson, we appreciate you joining us. Happy Thanksgiving. Hope you have a good one. You as well.